Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you a quick and easy spotlight technique card. I hope you'll stick around and see how I'm going to make it. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Since many of us are going to be confined to our homes for the next few weeks, I thought that I would try maybe not every day, but maybe every other day to just bring you a quick and easy card. You can watch it and craft along with me, or you can just watch it and maybe keep it in that memory bank for another day. For today's card, I was recently inspired by a card I saw online. If I can find it again, I will pop it up on the screen here. And it was the spotlight technique where most of your image is black and white and you focus on one area and add color to it. And I remembered that I had these papers from last year's Stampin' Up! Celebration. These are from the Botanical Butterfly Designer Series Paper Pack. And when I thought of doing the spotlight technique, I immediately thought of this paper because I can get that same feeling, but I don't have to do the coloring. Now I might come back with another video. There's another black and white paper from this same line, and perhaps I'll come back and show you how to do an actual spotlight card where you do the coloring. For my stamp set today, I'm gonna to be using this old Cornish Heritage Farm Sentiment stamp set. It is called Friend Centers, and unfortunately, this company I don't even think is in business any longer, but I'm sure that we all have sentiment stamps that we can add to cards, so use whatever you have. Once I start the process, I will go into a voiceover, so make sure that if you have any questions to leave those in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I will be cutting both of my pattern papers at the same time, making sure that the orientation is the same for both of them. This way I can ensure that my top and my bottom, or my color and my black and white layers, are cut exactly the same size so the patterns are the same. One is just color and one is black and white. I cut each piece of paper into four pieces that were four and a quarter by five and a half. This way that pattern is gonna fill the card front and be nice and bold. The next step, I left the two pieces of pattern paper together and now I'm gonna cut them in parts for the final spotlight technique. On the landscape orientation card, I cut one inch strip off the top and then one and a half inches below that. On the one that sits more portrait, I again, I cut one inch off the top and then I decided that I liked the next piece to be two and two quarter inches tall. You will want to make sure while you're cutting these and setting each of the sets aside that you keep everything together and in the correct orientation. To help the spotlight strip stand out from the rest of the card, I got out a piece of black cardstock. I cut one strip to five and a half inches wide and the next strip to four and a quarter inches wide. For the height of these pieces, I cut them one eighth of an inch taller than the middle or the spotlight piece from the card. So on the portrait one, I cut these each to two and three eighths inch tall. And on the landscape one, I cut them to one and three eighths inches tall. Now I was only able to get three of the four and a quarter inch wide pieces out of the strip. So later off camera, I just cut from a scrap to make that fourth one. Also off camera, I cut my cardstock for my card bases, and I actually keep just some of this on hand already cut in half, so it's just ready to fold when I'm ready to make cards. Now let's start getting these put together. Making sure to keep the sets together, I start by adhering the bottom piece to the bottom of the card front, and then I skip up to that top piece. Next, I take the opposite pattern paper, so in this case it's the black and white version, and I map that with the black cardstock strip. 
For now, I am not going to adhere the spotlight part to the card yet because later I will be using some foam tape. I repeated the same process for the portrait orientation cards, making sure again to keep all of the sets together. And then just so you don't get bored watching me, I did complete these off screen. Next up is the stamping. I got out my Misty, the stamp set, some scraps of white cardstock, and my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. Because these are red rubber stamps with foam, I did remove the foam or the mouse pad from my Misty, and then I chose some sentiments from the stamp set for my card fronts. I did try to stick with pretty generic or positive messages for these cards. And then I just did my stamping. I placed the first three sentiments onto the white cardstock, stamped those, and then I used the other two stamps for the remaining sentiments so that I added up to eight altogether. To trim these sentiments down, I did get out my Fiskars mini guillotine trimmer here, and I really just eyeballed this. I tried to find a point on the plastic guide on the cutter and line that up across the wording. The first thing I did, I just cut these apart, so I cut off the top and bottom, and then when that was done, I again, using my little guillotine trimmer, just cut off the ends, again just eyeballing that. Once I had these all cut out with pretty even borders and looking straight, I got out some black cardstock and started placing my sentiments down just so later when I use that guillotine trimmer again, I'll have just a small black mat around each of my sentiments. And now it is time to get out my big roll of foam tape. You know that I love this stuff. To cut it, I will be using my non-stick scissors. If you're interested in finding out more about either of these, I do have some product links in my description box below. I will be adhering the spotlight part of the card with this foam tape just to lift it up a little bit off the background. So I just put on some strips from my big roll and then I placed the black and white part onto the card front making sure that the butterflies or the orientation all lined up. Once that was done, I put some foam tape on the back of my sentiment, figured out where I wanted it to go, and then placed that right down. I continue to do this for each of the cards, and when you see the close-ups later, you'll see that each of them just looks a little bit different with orientation and the placement of the sentiments. Before I can call these cards finished, I did decide that they needed some bling. I noticed that a lot of the butterflies had kind of a nice bright lime green, so I pulled out some green gems from my stash and I placed three onto each of the card fronts. And here are some close-up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made these quick and easy cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. 
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.